Hey, Lauren is working today, so I thought it would be a great opportunity to share something with you that she could never understand. A love of mine that if she knew its depth would only make her jealous. Internet, I would like you to meet Herb, my 2011 Honda PCX 125. Many of you have asked questions about why I drive a scooter as my primary mode of transportation. Uh, things like, does it save money? Uh, what about safety? And what about the weather? And that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. You might be wondering why I named him Herb instead of a sexy stripper name like Heidi or Haley or something like that. And that's because scooting isn't that sexy, and we're okay with that. Scooting says a lot about you. It says, I enjoy the journey, not the destination, and uh, I'm comfortable with who I am. Or I got a DUI, which I didn't, but a lot of scooter drivers got DUIs. So your first thought is probably, can't I get all of the benefits of driving a scooter and maintain my self-respect by just driving a motorcycle? And I thought that myself. In fact, over my lifetime, I've probably owned 25 motorcycles, and you don't have to convince me of the feeling of raw power and control that 100 horsepower has between your legs. In fact, my last motorcycle before I bought the scooter was a turbocharged Harley Davidson uh, with an estimated 125 horsepower. That's seven more horsepower than the Honda Fit. Herb, on the other hand, has about 11.7 ponies in the stable. And he has a top speed of 55 miles per hour with a really good tailwind. So what makes Scoot Life so special? Well, simply put, scooters are just more practical than motorcycles. I remember when I had my Harley, it would take me two to three minutes just to get it started in the morning. My scooter, on the other hand, starts cold with a single flick of the switch. And although it doesn't make a statement going down the road like my Harley with pipes did, I show up to my destinations not smelling like gas and exhaust. This benefit should not be overlooked. Smelling like gas and exhaust really gets annoying. Next up is maneuverability. My scooter weighs 278 pounds. I can pull it out of the shed with a cup of coffee in one hand. My Harley, on the other hand, weighed 650 pounds and required a rolling start just to get over small bumps in the driveway. Herb has 25 liters of storage under the seat, if you can believe it, which is enough for a full-size helmet, some ratchet straps, spare brake pads, glasses, gloves, and a backpack full of gym clothes, or four grocery bags. Not to mention the compartment on the dash for your wallet, sunglasses, and phone. On a motorcycle, you'll be lucky if you find enough storage for an insurance card and your registration. And last but not least are the savings. Now, it's not hard to imagine that driving a scooter over a car could save you hundreds of dollars per month, but what about a scooter over a motorcycle? Well, the savings actually are pretty measurable. As far as fuel economy, most motorcycles average between 30 and 60 miles per gallon, whereas Honda estimates this bad boy gets 110 miles miles to the gallon. I've actually seen closer to 97 or 98 miles per gallon. Not to mention the tires are cheaper, there's no chain to replace, and if you do have to work on the engine, there's a single liquid-cooled cylinder. As far as upfront costs, you can expect to spend $1,000 to $2,000 for a quality used brand name scooter, and that's what I recommend. I would take a well-used Italian or Japanese brand scooter over the Chinese and Taiwanese knockoffs every single day of the week. So that means stick with Vespa, Honda, Suzuki, or Yamaha. Well, that covers the benefits, but surely there's some concerns about safety and weather. So it's true that you don't have a 3,500 pound cage traveling around with you to protect you from accidents or anything, really. Ah, uh, I just got pooped on on my scooter. And I'm not gonna lie, there is an associated risk with driving a scooter, and I'm very aware of that. In fact, you're actually 30 times more likely to die in a motorcycle accident than a car accident. That's not something to just gloss over. But there are a few things you can do that lower your risk. First is I always wear a helmet, and that reduces the risk of death by 37% and reduces the risk of brain injury by 67%. Second, I use all that knowledge to make myself more aware of my surroundings when I drive. And for me, this just keeps me alert and kind of aware of what's going on, and I'm constantly just thinking, this car's gonna come over at me and I need to be prepared for that. Then there's the weather. And surprisingly, this has not been an issue for me, even though I live in a very wet climate. Uh, there have only been a handful of times where I've been caught in the rain and I've either just been coming out of a place where I can just hang out for a few minutes and wait for it to pass, or I just get wet. Usually I'm on my way home and changing isn't a big deal. Uh, but when we were in Europe, I noticed that everyone drove scooters there and the snow was no problem for them. They actually had these little things that covered their handlebars down to the front fairing that were almost like snow pants for their scooters and it kept all the snow and the wind off their body. And that's about it. As you can tell, I really do recommend a scooter if it's something you're thinking about. And you know, Herb and I have a very bright future together. Uh, I'm not gonna lie that there are some days where I miss being able to stretch out over, you know, American iron like my old Harley. Uh, but as they say, personality is what makes you sexy and Herb's got a lot of that. So thanks for watching guys. We will see you on Sunday. Bye.